Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm yours, Jack, and this is yet another video tutorial of how to use Word 2010 or Word 2010. If you're new to the show, thanks for stopping by and please click the subscribe button. Let me see if I can point to it on the side or down below uh, where the subscribe button may be today. Please click on that and subscribe to these shows. So when I release a new show, you will be notified immediately that a new show is available to you. I hope you've been following along with these Microsoft Word tutorials, and I don't want to bore you. We're trying to start from the very beginning, the earliest part of using Microsoft Word, um, and we're going to work our way through uh, the different segments up to the point where we start actually creating documents. Um, so I hope you follow along because it's going to help you later if I refer to a button or a command or something that we need to work with you're going to know where that button is located and how it actually works. So that's why I wanted to take you from the very beginning. In this video tutorial, I thought we would talk about the file structure or how the files are saved in Microsoft Word uh, 2010 or 2010. You know, we had this trouble when Microsoft Office first came out with uh, 2007 with incompatibility issues. Uh, we had a lot of trouble with that. And maybe you did it at your company or at your school, whatever you uh, work with there. But what happened was we would have our staff members create something in Microsoft uh, 2007 at that time, Office 2007. And it gave it a different extension. That file extension was not compatible with uh, Office 2003 that we had on some of the other computers within the school. So we had to be able to... Um, find a way to make those compatible. So what we came up with was Microsoft's free download from Microsoft Download Center. If you type in your search bar Office Compatibility Pack, you will come up with uh, basically um, Microsoft's Compatibility Package. You download it and uh, it's, it's a file format converters is what it says, but then it allows Office uh, 2003 and Office XP to save that new DOCX format or to open DOCX format. So, you know, and part of what I do for a lot of companies is when we sit down and we try to uh, basically talk it over or I consult with them and say, you know, they say, Jack, we want to upgrade to the latest, greatest Microsoft Office. And I say, why? Um, sometimes it's because they're having compatibility issues with other companies, but uh, there is a compatibility fix which is absolutely free, just download it and away you go. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with why uh, the new format. I believe, now it's just my personal belief, that Microsoft created a new format because of a program that you may or may not know of called OpenOffice, which is a free uh, office package. And what happened was OpenOffice at the time would not work with these new formats, this DOCX, um, or the XLSX, I believe it was for Excel, uh, and the new PowerPoint uh, presentation um, file formatting. It wouldn't work. Now they have overcame that, and now it does work uh, well. The compatibility is in between the two programs. Again, everything works fine. Uh, I think that's maybe why they did it. I don't know. That's just speculation on my part. But what we want to talk about here is when we do a file save, so we do a file and I like to do a save as. Now you could just do a save. When you do a save, it's going to save that file as a DOCX file. That's by default. But let's say if you know somebody uh, is that you know you talk to or some small company you work with or some school that you're sending something to, and they don't have the DOC uh, X extensions or they don't have the compatibility pack loaded, maybe they have nobody to install it for them, maybe they don't know how or they don't want to mess with it. You could do a save as, and when we do a save as, what we're going to come up with is this box. And if you click the pull down menu at the bottom, you can save it as a Word 97 and a 2003 document. It's going to be .doc. Not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people do a save as. Uh, like in 2010, there's a built-in PDF, so you can just save it as a PDF. Uh, we'll talk about other ways you can publish it out to PDF, but save it as a PDF. Uh, save it as web page. You can actually make it HTML coding. So it's very nice to do it as a web page. Or you can do an open document text, just a straight text file. 
or works. You can now do in 2010, you can do work six through nine documents and you can open up Microsoft works document in 2010. They finally built that in. Uh, what a nightmare that has been for us. You know, you buy a computer and you have Microsoft works on it. You're like, oh, great. I got a free word processor. Well, yeah, free is the ample word there. It may be free. Doesn't work with everything. You'd be better off to download OpenOffice. Uh, absolutely free. Uh, at least you have more compatibility with Microsoft Word. Why Microsoft ever build a package, uh, a software package to do word processing and and uh, more or less like Excel type spreadsheets, but makes it incompatible with their Microsoft Office package? Totally beyond me why that ever happened. Uh, maybe they just want you to upgrade. So you can do that. But you can do this. Like I said, then it will give it the extension of .doc. So with that said, I think now you understand that you can save as a .doc. Now here's something I was telling you about where it says save and send. If you click on save and send, uh, you can actually take your document and put it in a lot of different ways. There are a lot of different ways out there. So this is uh, more than just saving. I wanted to actually touch base with you is this. You can send it as an attachment. You can uh, send it so that it makes it an email attachment and, and off it goes. Uh, this is okay. By default, it does work with Outlook. Send as a PDF. That means you can email it as an attachment, but it'll be a PDF file. Send as XPS, which I don't know if anybody uses that. If you do, email me. Let me know. I'd like to hear from you. Um, or send it as an internet fax. So you can actually send it out, put a fax number in, and send it through the internet as a fax itself. So here's some other stuff. Create a PDF or an XPS document. You just simply click on that button. You can do that. Save the web is just doing that. It'll save it out to a web location. And we will talk about that later because it's a really neat feature that not a lot of people know about uh, 2010 and how it saves it out to your uh, live account. It's really nice uh, how that works and how you can access it later on down the road. Save it to a SharePoint server. If you have that, I'm sure you know about it. If you don't, then it's not going to matter to you. Or publish it as a blog post. And you can save it now as a WordPress uh, blogger. Uh, little glitches with it. If you're a, a blogger and you want to save your Word documents out to a blog site. is It doesn't handle pictures real well. I found a lot of issues with trying to post a picture up and trying to get it to display properly on your uh, blog. So maybe you want to do that and maybe you don't. Uh, let's get out of here. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to touch base with you today is how to save files and a couple different ways you can actually save uh, files as uh, given your file name. And nowadays you can name your file whatever you want. Some years ago we had to, we were limited to eight characters. Uh, it had to be lowercase, couldn't be spaces. Today you can pretty much use whatever you want to use. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. And once again, like I said, if you've enjoyed it, and you want to stick around, please click on the subscribe button. I'd uh, love to have you here with us uh, each and every time a new episode is posted. Also, if you feel you uh, want to keep up, maybe you want to use these trainings uh, with your staff. That's by all means, that's great. Um, also, I do make myself available to come out and train your staff. If you need training on Microsoft Office uh, or uh, Photoshop Elements, I train on that. Um, and pretty much anything else you can think of. I actually have a great online class too on Moodle, uh, the online uh, learning environment. So if you want to touch base on that, we could do that. Uh, with that, please stop by jackstechcorner.com and drop a small donation in the donation bucket. It always helps to uh, keep these shows going and to keep the websites alive. Until next time, take care and I'll see you back here on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.